Greetings fellow hobbyists, Sam Lenz here, being brought to you by my friends at Black Powder Red Earth. In today's tutorial we're taking an in-depth look at all of the techniques and approaches that I employed to paint up a Scorch Crisis Troop from the new Black Powder Red Earth box game. Oh what fun! It's going to be a little bit of a lengthy tutorial, but I promise you there's a lot of valuable information contained within, so watch it in parts if you must, but please do watch the whole thing. And stay tuned for the end, we'll take a look at the finished model and I can refer you to additional resources to improve your painting. So, without any further ado, let's get on with the lesson. Black powder, red earth. The first thing that we're going to do is start off on the ground level, paint the model's base. So on my palette, I have three colors, green, brown, black, and buff, all from Vallejo. Right now I'm laying down a healthy coat of green, brown. Seeing as this is a black undercoat, it's going to take a thick amount of paint to cover all that up. So the first thing I'm doing is just laying down one establishing coat, very thick, hefty coat with a large brush. And yeah, we'll just cover up the whole base, try to get around every little bit of that texture that we've glued down. And here the base is all dry. Now what I'm going to be doing is called wet blending, where I'm taking two different colors while they're both still wet, combining them on the surface to create a gradient. So you can see I'm laying paint down through the mid zone of the base, just a hefty amount of green brown. Then I'll take a small amount of black paint. It's going to take some practice to really get the best out of this technique, but you can see I'm just gradually mixing the colors together right on the surface. And as I run out of paint, the gradient is created. It's moving back into that green-brown range. I don't want this the back of this base to be entirely black. I'm just using black to darken the green-brown, really. So everything has a little bit of green-brown mixed into it. And sometimes you've got to go back and just add more paint, keep your active ingredients wet and workable. Now on the front portion of the base, I'll be doing the same thing, but adding a brighter highlight. So it will be green-brown this time, plus Vallejo buff. It's this light kind of yellow ivory tone. And yeah, sweeping them together right on the surface. You can see this gives me a nice sort of dynamic range. There's light coming from the front, giving a sense of motion to the model as it's, it's, a, it's advancing, and a little bit of shadow left behind in the area where it's leaving. I like to base models like this to, just because it adds a little bit of extra action and uh, momentum to the tabletop. We'll have to let this dry. Now that that's dry, I'll be laying down a wash. I've added some soft tone from the Army Painter to my palette. And just with a moist brush, we'll take a small amount of this wash, spread it out across the entire base. You can see it's going to soak in all these textured areas, just help define this mixture of gravel and dirt. Just give it a nice, healthy coat. With the wash dry, I can grab a different brush that has dry bristles. This will be important because the technique we'll be using is called dry brushing. Take a little bit of green-brown, a little bit of buff, about a 50-50 mix. I'll wipe most of the paint off on my paper towel. The idea here is as I sweep the brush over textured areas, you can see it's just catching on the raised edges. 
It's a little rough, it's a little messy, but it's perfect for picking out all this dirt texture. See the effect that has. Don't be afraid to get any paint on the, the pants and the shoes. We're working in a specific order, so we cover our tracks as we get the job done. Yeah, just like that. One coat should do it. Nice and light. And voila! The base is done, for now. Next in line, let's talk about those jeans. On the palette, I've added dark Prussian blue from Vallejo. This will be my main base coat for the pants. So just using my larger brush, moist bristles. I'm not diluting the paint at all, but just pay attention to how much moisture is on my, my brush. I want the paint to slide off of the brush smoothly onto the model. I'll take small controllable amounts of paint, stretch them over a relatively large surface area. But yeah, let's get one solid base coat of dark Prussian blue down. And now with a base coat established, I've got these two pools of paint on my palette. It's dark Prussian blue plus a little bit of Vallejo buff and then plus a little bit more Vallejo buff. And what I want to do is move through and create a series of highlights. I want to simulate a real life lighting situation. So on all these upward facing angles, I'll be taking a very small amount of paint, and sweeping it upwards towards the light in a sense. Think of it like that. You're going to have to hold your model underneath a lamp in some cases to observe how the light is falling across the surfaces. But yeah, it's gonna, we're just working in many thin layers of paint. Just with a with moist bristles, a very small amount of paint on the brush, I can sweep and produce very thin coats of paint. Sometimes it will take more than one pass to get a smooth and passable result. But I can pick up all these, these folds and wrinkles and just paying attention to how the light is falling. Even from my lamps I can see where the light is gathering the inside of his knee, for example. I can see these reflections still catching on the base coat. So I know how the light is behaving there. And every once in a while, I'll add just a little bit of water to the paint. Pressing very lightly, sweeping upwards. Just like so. And when you're going for the, you're trying to create very smooth layers of paint, you may have to go back for multiple passes. You want to let things accumulate very gradually. And remember that the direction you're moving your brush in, that's where the paint will deposit. For example, you see me sweeping the paint in this direction, you can tell that there's more of an accumulation at the end of my brush stroke. So that's how I'm controlling the paint on the jeans. 
That's how I'll be controlling the paint on all these surfaces. Okay, you can see moving through and sometimes saturation, just more than one coat of paint is going to give you a little bit of extra dimension because you're working with transparent amounts of paint. The more you layer up that transparency, the smoother your blends will become. And there stand those jeans after a little bit of layering gradual working up. See I've got some bit of light and shadow going. Let's take that even further. Let me freshen up my mixture here of Vallejo Buff and Dark Prussian Blue. Make just a little bit lighter take of that color. Moving down to a much smaller and finer brush. I'm going to very gently start highlighting the seams in the pants, some of the more intense folds. I'll have to dilute my paint down with water a little bit so it flows from the brush more easily. The amount of pressure you apply the paint with is very important. The harder you press, the wider your lines will become. You can see me taking multiple passes and just slowly sweeping over the surface, gradually getting closer and closer. It's because I'm trying to apply a very light amount of pressure. Again, you can see how thin the paint is on my painting handle here. You see I sweep a little bit of the paint off, so I'm, I'm working with just barely the, the thinnest tint. And in some of these larger areas, I just like to sweep some broader highlights in place as well as some edge highlights with this tone. And I'm making sure to not completely cover the previous layers. The idea is that I'm building a gradient and I'm covering less and less of the surface area the progressively brighter tone. That's what's giving a little bit more dimension to these small 28 millimeter models. It's going to take a lot of practice, but just be patient, enjoy the ride. Painting models is fun and you'll slowly get better. You do something one time, that's your first try. You do it 10 times and hopefully it's nine times better than the first. It's going to take a lot of patience to slowly develop these skills. But yeah, getting better and better, a little bit at a time, it's very rewarding. So let me continue to lay down some highlights on these pants and we'll come back for the next step. All right, pants established. Just take an all around look. Now, next thing I'd like to do is work on the shirt. I've left the arm 
unattached for ease of painting. Get access to all that tactical gear. On my palette, I have Kaudor Red base. I'll be adding a small amount of black to that just to make a deeper red. This will, just like with the dark Prussian blue, this will be our darkest color. And I like to keep things simple. You could find a deeper red that's straight out of the bottle if you'd like a little more consistency, if you don't trust yourself. But I prefer to uh, mix paints and just kind of have a large primary assortment to choose from. And there we have a nice brick red base coat established for the t-shirt. And I'll be painting this up much the same as the pants. I just want to kind of accent all of the dimensions of the model, just gradually pulling highlights up from the shadows. So the uh, upper shoulder is a good example here, taking just a very small amount of paint, sweeping it upwards over this curve, pressing lightly so the paint just catches on the the wrinkles without going into the, the recesses. It's going to take many thin layers to really get something uh, saturated and noticeable established. very thin layer and what that would look like on a flat surface would be something like this you can see there's a portion of my brush that's picking paint up as it's being laid down and just a small portion of the brush that has paint on it so I'll take a small amount of paint on the tip of the brush you can see it's it's barely anything and I'm able to sweep this small puddle of paint around and even that is pretty large in in these these miniature terms you know i want i want even less of that when i'm painting the figure itself so if you're having trouble controlling the paint less paint you want to have i can't stress enough the a controllable amount of paint so if it isn't uh, behaving as you'd like it, just have less and less paint. And then gradually adding more, kind of dialing, dialing things up and figuring out what a controllable amount of paint is for you because it's, it's going to be relative to the surface area that you're trying to cover. Yeah, you can see the... Um, just the succession of, of layers, of many thin layers to get a smooth result, a saturated result. And even with just this one color, I can, I can get a bit of a, a variety of tones out of it, just based on how much area I'm covering and how saturated things are coming out. I don't think I need to worry much about the front of his shirt as the weapon will be covering that. Excellent. A little bit more over on his pectoral and shoulder. Just leave the rest to the shadows. And I might want to go in with a even smaller brush and sort of line some things out like this, this seam right here on 
the t-shirt that'll be catching a little bit more light some of these folds and wrinkles it's using the side of the brush to pick up some of these edges we'll talk more about that when we get to the weaponry All right, after many thin layers, we've got a decent uh, red established. Let's take that one step further. I also have Cotor Red Highlight here on my palette. And I'll be mixing that with some red. I'd say a 50-50 mixture, just making a brighter, warmer red. And just slicing the pie on that gradient covering less of that previous area that I established. I'll start bringing my orange and red mixture into place, pulling out some edge highlights, some of these wrinkles. Just pressing very, very lightly. And sweeping things into place just like so. And it's up to you how far you'd like to take a gradient. Maybe you want to start adding a little bit of white to this mixture or some Vallejo buff, something to sort of brighten and, and lighten things up. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah, it's, you're the artist. It's up to you to decide just how far you'd like to take your gradient. But for me, I'm usually, I'm happy with, uh, three or four colors, at least for our, our purposes here today. Yeah, just very fine line work. To get those fine lines, <laughs> Again, we'll look at the uh, the holder. See, I'm I'm leading the brush and I'm pressing very very lightly, just to create the finest line. And I'm almost dropping downwards in sort of a U shape. See, I'll I'll start, make contact, and then gradually lift up as well. That is how I'm getting these finer lines in place. Just pressing very, very lightly because the harder you press, the wider the line will be. All right, now we're getting somewhere. The model's starting to come to life to my palette. I have added German Gray, Deck Tan. These are both from Vallejo and Titanium White from Liquitex. I use a mixture of paints. Um, Vallejo white is fine. I just happen to use what I have. So first thing I'm going to do, I'll take this German gray. I'm going to cover all of the tactical gear. Every piece of equipment that isn't blue jean or t-shirt or sunglasses, all going to get a coat German gray. Alrighty, with my German gray base coat in place, it's time to move over to color deck tan. Dilute that down just a little bit. And what I'm going to be doing is a series of edge highlights. Um, you can see there's, there's paint on my brush. I'm going to overhang the tip. We'll concentrate on the, the back, the stock of the rifle. Just pressing very, very lightly. See, I can, I can use the three-dimensional aspects of the figure to my advantage, where there's, you know, an, an angle, a crease sticking out. It's more likely to pick the paint up. 
And these models are very, very detailed. There, there's a lot of edge highlighting you can get lost in. Um, just do your best. It's okay if you don't catch every single edge highlight. You can be as tedious about this as you want to. Because, yeah, in, in some cases that, that perfect angle doesn't present itself and you're going to have to go in with, with a very fine brush and just paint the line work in place. You know, we don't always have that uh, perfect situation. And these small amounts of paint will dry up quickly on the end of your brush. You have to go back to the to the well frequently. Yeah, you can see some areas I have to paint the highlights in place, but most of these areas I'll be able to get away with just a simple edge highlight. But there's a lot of equipment base coated in this way. Got a lot of ground to cover. That's my basic approach, so just give me a little bit of time to get this all done. We can jump back in place. But yeah, um, to save yourself a little bit of time, concentrate on the upward facing angles. Like I'm not going to edge highlight the bottom of this holster, I'm just doing the upward facing area. And here we are after some edge highlighting, just a little bit of lining and defining to express the details in this equipment a little more clearly. Now before we lid on a wash, I also have added some olive green from Vallejo to my palette and I want to go in between these armor plates and lay down a base coat for the helmet getting that nice olive sort of military green tone in between all these plates and also to that olive green bring in about 60% Vallejo deck tan and we'll get some highlights established again just paying attention to the upward facing angles a little bit of dilution doesn't have to be perfect or pretty because we're going to lay down a wash on all this equipment in the next step but I wanted a little mid-tone and a highlight established. Now also on my palette I've added a little bit of dark tone from the Army Painter. It's just a nice black wash. I'll dip my brush into my water first. And all over this equipment, still if not attached to this arm, you can see it moving around a little bit. And you can see why we laid a base coat. I'll just remove this. We didn't go to absolute black. We used German gray instead and then washing down to absolute black. So all the crevices will be the darkest possible tone. Just sort of intelligent usage of colors. Saves me a little bit of time this way. And yeah, just lay that down over all the equipment. You see it's helping to kind of smooth and marry a lot of these tones. The base coat and highlighting on the helmet becomes a lot more smooth when it's filtered through the wash. Yeah, lots of surface areas to cover with this, so let me just keep sweeping along this character and we will get to the next step. All right, with that wash dry, you can see the result. Don't worry about the skin tone. We'll be talking about that in a moment. But yeah, just wanted to kind of give you an all around view. 
that black wash has helped to sink into the recesses and line and define all these details. So the final step for the equipment, I'll be going in with a little bit of white and just adding some tiny dots and slashes. I want a little bit more contrast going on. Kind of mimic that semi-gloss look on the equipment by adding these points of light. I suppose you could also just use a semi-gloss coating if you'd like to experiment a little bit. But just some fine, tiny dots and slashes to round off all those peaks and valleys. In theory, as you're working, the process goes faster and faster because you're covering less and less of the surface area, provided you don't make any mistakes. Tread lightly, my friend. I've also chosen to add these kind of stylish reflective lines onto some of the scopes and barrels. So just like before with this shirt, just dropping um, you know, those fine lines, just pressing very gently, moving the brush downward along that vertical line, just create a bit of a reflective highlight. But yeah, that'll do it for all the equipment. I've got to continue carrying this step out across the rest of the model. Give me a moment to do so. We'll jump back, talk about the next step. And there he stalks after some choice highlights with just uh, tiny white dots. I might add some more post video, but for now, I'm happy. Let's talk about those pythons. So the arms have been base coated with uh, Iridian Flesh from P3. And now for the first highlight, I'll be using Midland Flesh plus a little bit of Vallejo Buff. Take a bit of paint off the brush. Again, just sweeping and using very small, controllable amounts of paint. need to use many thin layers to build up a smooth transition. Just do what you're happy with. Yeah, just really rounding out and accenting these dimensions. that first layer looks bad, then good. You're, you're on the right track. It's only through many thin transparent layers that you get a decent buildup. I'll work the other arm and a lot of the time you know when I'm not recording on video and just painting by myself at home I'm able to jump all around on the model letting one area fully dry before I paint the next. You can see just how, how thin and ineffective these first few layers are. Just have to have a little patience and belief. But yeah, mainly I just want to tell you those the first layers never look good. They're always, they're always a little bit difficult, but as you add more and more layers, more Granules of pigment will sink down to the bottom, to the surface of the model, and start filling in those gaps. See that right on top of the bicep. And also, if a blend isn't looking smooth enough, can always jump back to the base color. I'll take my Iridian Flesh and right over this transition 
on the forearm. I can sweep that towards the wrist. Bring my highlight tone into place. I could wet blend. I could layer things up. Many options to achieve that final look. And here we are going in for that all-important third pass. Generally when I'm painting, I like to stick to what I call the rule of threes, meaning I do everything aside from a base coat at least three times when I'm trying to create a smooth blend. You see it at least three layers before the passable result presents itself. Now let's add a little bit of flesh wash to the palette. Lay that in place, and again, you can see the unifying effect that a wash has. Just be careful when you're using it on a smoother area because it's going to have a tendency to pool up in strange ways. So just make sure that you're sweeping it downward into the creases. It's not going to work like magic. You need to apply it with you know, a little bit of intelligence, a little bit of uh, direction in mind. See, I'm sweeping away from the highlights and pushing towards the shadow. Let's let that dry. And now we'll come back for one more pass. Um, I have some options here. I'd like to take them both, but I'm just going to reapply that last highlight color, of course, in a smaller portion than previously. Once again, slicing the pie on that, that gradient. I can also add just a little bit of white to my base coat and cover even less. So I'm getting a, yeah, a good amount of contrast going. Now the whole thing with these miniatures is they're not life-size models, but we're trying to paint them in a way that can mimic the scale they would be in reality. And here and there, exercise our artistic freedoms and take a more illust illustrative or embellishing look at some of these models. Just a very thin glaze. And that'll do it on them guns. I'll have a little bit of clean up, clean up work to do, but you see the steps in the process. All right, moment of truth. We have some lenses and goggles to talk about. I'll take a mixture of black cot or red base coat. That's what I'll start off the shades with. And I'll go with just pure cot or red base on the night vision goggles. As well as the any scope utensils. I'll go just knock out these night vision goggles. Do the cut or red highlight. So just an orange dot right in the middle. Because I want them to look lit up, you know, illuminated. So just a red base coat, a bright orange dot in the middle. There we go. It's a hard target. Now, on the glasses, I'll take that cotto red base, just a small amount, and leaving some of that base coat visible. 
sweeping that towards the bottom of the shades. And you don't have to blend very well on this part. Of course, it doesn't hurt. But we're just going to be adding more uh, brighter succession of colors to this. So now it's Kato Red Base, Kato Red Highlight mixed together. Actually, let me do a pure Kato Red Base. There we go wasn't quite saturated enough before so a second pass is necessary now the cattle red base and cattle red highlight mixture just red and bright orange in layman's terms there are so many paints out there with different uh, fanciful names you can find an equivalent color in many different brands. So don't worry about using the exact specific paint that I have. And we'll go with a pure bright orange. Let's lay that down in the smallest amount possible. And yes, I may be a little quiet. Sometimes you have to hold your breath during precise brush strokes. And so maybe some of the mid-tone has been lost. I can always go back in with another, just a glaze of that red. Lay it down just like so. I think I'll go back with, uh, take pure black as well. Glaze that towards the upper portion of the sunglasses. Now I'll go in with white just to get a dot of reflective light. Just pressing very lightly. Ah. Two glints is one too many. I'll just add a single glint of light. So the beauty of paint is that you can always just cover your mistakes. I'll go back in with some black, just cover up that dot. No one's the wiser. And now for the nearly final step, I'll be taking some weathering powder. Unfortunately, Secret Weapon Miniatures is out of business now, but Weathering powders exist from many different brands, uh, MIG, Vallejo, they can be found out there. I'll take just a small amount of weathering powder, dust it around on the base and the shoes, so help bring a kind of a variety of materials into play. It, it adds to the, to the realism, sort of dusting up the model shoes and you know the base of the pants a little bit on the base as well and there you have it ready for fast-paced skirmish combat in a modern theater of war give me a 360 there are a couple of steps that I didn't include in the tutorial because they're very very simple the addition of a small tuft of static grass, 
as well as painting the rim of the base with a mixture of Vallejo black and green brown. Really simple stuff. If some of these terms are unfamiliar to you, such as wet blending and edge highlighting, I understand a lot of the, the audience for Black Powder Red Earth is brand new to miniature painting, feel free to search me out on Patreon at Sam Lenz Artwork or on my YouTube channel, found under the same name, Sam Lenz Artwork on YouTube. So until we meet again, my friends, keep practicing. Remember, not everything has to be perfect. It is important to just get things done, look back at them in hindsight, and consider what we could do better the next time around. Bring those models to life, get them on the tabletop, have fun.